Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET Nuke Corporation. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the .NET Nuke scheduler. So the scheduler is a host-only item. You can only get to it if you're logged in as a host or a super user account. And there we're going to see that there's a number of different tasks that are available within the scheduler in .NET Nuke, and only some of those are actually enabled. We'll walk through what those are and what they do. I'll also show you how you can manually run a task within the scheduler. We'll talk about the timing of tasks, how they actually run and what schedule they really run on. And then there's an option in the host settings called timer or request method. And we'll talk about that. So we're going to switch over here to a .NET Nuke instance. It's currently running version 5.6.2. Now it's running on web matrix. So it's running locally on this particular computer. Now under the host menu or from the host page as we are right now, we can find a schedule option. So that schedule page is going to list off all of the scheduled tasks and developers can create scheduled tasks to be included here within particular modules. But these are the scheduled tasks that basically come with .NET Nuke by default. So you can see there's a number of those uh, available. The first one purge users online is enabled if you have users online enabled on your website and basically it's set up to run every minute and what it will do is it will go through and look for users who are online if they've been active in the past 20 minutes or not if they haven't they'll be purged from that online collection after that we have this purge site log which will go through the dot nuke site log which is a very basic and un unutilized uh, analytics tool within .NET Nuke. The site log is turned off by default, so this the purge option is turned off as well. There's a purge schedule history. Now that's going to run every day. What it will do is every day, 24 hours from the previous time it ran, it's going to go through and clean up the history for all of these scheduled tasks. Every time something runs in the scheduler, it saves a history to a history item. And there's a way when you create a task to define how much history you want to store for that. Once the uh, the purge history task runs, it will go through and, and remove anything out of that window for the, the various items that we're storing history for. Purge log buffer. If you have the event log buffer enabled within the host settings, this will run every minute and basically will look in the memory on the server for any events that have been uh, written into the buffer and then it will take them from the buffer and write them into the event log table in the database. Send log notifications, also related to the event log. If you have log notifications enabled, that will send messages out to those people who have subscribed to those notifications. Uh, the search engine scheduler is one that's always enabled by default within .NET Nuke. It's going to run every 30 minutes. Basically, it's going to, every 30 minutes, go through and try to index the content of the modules in .NET Nuke that support iPortable. So that's how the basic search functionality in .NET Nuke gets indexed, and it runs on that 30-minute schedule. We have a purge cache option that can be set up to run. It's not currently enabled. There's a purge module cache that is enabled. It runs every minute uh, on the website, so it'll go through and clean up a cache for any modules that are storing their data in the cache. And then finally, there's a messaging dispatch task that will go through and send emails for .NET Nuke running on a schedule of every minute. Now, the way that the scheduling works for tasks is they run on a set time frame. They don't run at a certain time every day. They run every minute or every 24 hours or every 60 minutes, whatever the setting happens to be. And they tend to run one minute or 24 hours after the last time they ran. So it's possible that they will not run at the same time every day based on a few things. The way .NET Nuke works and the way standard ASP.NET applications work in IIS or the web server is those applications will only be loaded into memory on the server when there's a request happening for the website. So if no one hits your website and the default window is 20 minutes, if no one hits your website for 20 minutes, IIS or the web server is going to unload your site from memory. During that time that the site is not actually running, none of your scheduled tasks will run. When the site fires back up, .NET Nuke will fire up the scheduler, and it will run any tasks that should have run in that time when the site was not running. So it's possible if your, your uh, let's say the schedule history task runs right now, 24 hours from now, if the website's not running, if, if no one's hitting this website, obviously that scheduled task isn't going to run. 
Maybe 26 hours from now, the site comes back up. Then that scheduled task would run. 24 hours from that point, it would run again. So you can see how the window would offset and, and these, these tasks can get set out at different times. Now with the tasks, and in particular the search engine scheduler, if you go to the edit option for that particular task, you can go to an individual task and you can run that task manually. So you want to click on the pencil next to the task, and then there's a run now option. That's going to fire off that particular task. And for the search engine scheduler, that's one that people will, will frequently want to run manually if they're making changes and they want to sh make sure that those changes get indexed and are searchable on your website. Now, we could run that. It would go ahead and execute. We can also take a look at the schedule history for our task. And we can see how long it takes to run when it has been running. Now, the last time it ran was at 9.47 a.m., which was probably about 15 minutes ago. And it took just under or just oh yeah just under 10 seconds to run now that's probably because there were other things going on that's actually uh, quite large for the the task to run based on the size of this particular website you can see previously it ran in 1.2 seconds and three seconds and six seconds before that so the other thing we'll go ahead and take a look at from a, a scheduling perspective is we're going to go to the host settings page so we were talking about those tasks and how they're going to run where they run only when the website is up and running. There's a way to schedule or set the, the scheduler to run on a request, meaning when someone hits the website, .NET will look and see if there are any scheduled tasks that need to be executed, and it will execute them, and that's the default setting. That's this request mode here under the scheduler mode option. So the default setting is request mode. That means whenever someone makes a request to the website, .NET is going to say, okay, let's see if we have any scheduled tasks that need to be fired off. The timer method will actually fire off a separate thread that will run in the background on the server, and that will go out and run no matter if there are requests or not. Now, it still depends on the site being loaded and running on the web server. So if IIS unloads the site for some reason, the timer task, the, that timer uh, thread that's running will also be unloaded and it would not be executed. In general though, I would come in and I would set the scheduler mode to the timer method just because I want that those schedules to be running on a somewhat consistent basis as opposed to waiting for tasks or waiting for requests to come in to my website. Those requests are incoming requests from visitors to my site. I'd rather those scheduled tasks be running uh, all the time or as much as they can be. So I can come in, change that method there, and click on update. So that's a very basic introduction into the .NET Nuke scheduler. Now in a future video, we'll talk about how you can create scheduled tasks within your own custom development. But in the meantime, I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training. You can find it under the resources tab on .NET there we have a variety of free videos, as well as instructor-led training and information about our custom on-site and online training offerings. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.